Krishna 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 hey Krishna 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 Hare Krishna welcome to Pari Prashnena Seva we begin with our short invocation. Oma Gyana Timirandasya Gyanam Jana Salakaya Chakshurun Bilitam Jena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Manobhistam Stapitam Jena Bhutali Svayam Rupa Kadamahyam Dadati Svapadantikam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutali Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvise Shashanya Vadi Paschata De Shatarine Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gradhar Sivasadi Gauravakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Everyone may kindly repeat after me these two short invocations. <coughs> <coughs> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Sri Sarabhyay Namaha Om Sri Sarabhyay Namaha Om Sri Sarabhyay Namaha Mukam karoti bachalam pangum langayate girim yad kripa atmaham bande sri karam vinataranam yad kripa atmaham bande sri karam vinataranam Hare Krishna <coughs> Just to mention before we begin our session today. Uh, <clears throat> the title of our uh, program is Pari Prashne Na Sevaya. <clears throat> so, unless there are questions being sent, it will be difficult uh, to continue the program. Last two days we have not received any questions, uh, <clears throat> and uh, therefore um, the program will be. Uh, continued for as long as we have questions, but if they are not forthcoming, then uh, <clears throat> we may have to uh, uh, discontinue at least for some time. <clears throat> we will immediately uh, go to our reading from the book speaking about Varnasrama. And uh, the new chapter we are reading is entitled hmm, it's a one page chapter actually mm -hmm. and uh, it is called illusory progress I will read the whole page this is a morning walk in Mauritius on the 3rd of October 1975 <clears throat> mm. And uh, I'll just read uh, from the beginning. <clears throat> the summary is given on the top here. Illusory progress versus bullock cart. Simple agrarian life versus oppressive factory life. And depending on the market, or depending on Krishna. So Srila Prabhupada begins, Simply 
a little high standard of living and they think this is advancement. <clears throat> and the Western civilization is influencing all other parts of the world in that way. Improve the standard of living. <clears throat> there is no improvement, but it is Maya. They're thinking this is improvement. <clears throat> so as Srila Prabhupada would often point out, the Vedic literatures clearly explain what are the main problems of life. <clears throat> there are four in number. These are the main problems of life. If we can resolve these four main problems of life, then we are making a progress. And those, of course, are uh, <clears throat> birth, death, old age, and disease. Uh, although modern society is making so many arrangements and so many, so much of so-called progress, these four problems actually remain. So let's where Prabhupada continues here. <clears throat> Progress. <clears throat> the progress is that they have got motor car and they have progressed how to die quickly. This is the progress. At any moment he can die. As soon as he is in the car going 70 miles an hour, that means taking the risk at any moment, the risk of dying at any moment. This is the progress. Formerly people were going in bullock cart or horse carriage from one village to another. That was primitive. <clears throat> people will say, now we can go 100 miles away from home for earning money and taking risk to die at any moment. That is progress, is it not? Oh yes, people say. Formerly, Prabhupada continues to speak here, formerly they were satisfied by tilling the ground, getting food grains. Now they have started factories at the cost of thousands of men's labor. Some director is getting money and enjoying life. That is progress. And these rascals, laborers, they're thinking that these men <clears throat> are getting the profit, cream of this business. We're working. Why not take ourselves? That is communism. Push the Krishna. There is one small coal mining town we did Sankirtan at, an Indian community. And they were thinking that the coal mine is doing everything for us. They're giving us schools, they're giving us medicine, they're giving us so many things. Without the coal mine, where would we be? Prabhupada, yes. <clears throat> and Brahmananda, He adds here in Mauritius, this is taking place in Mauritius, in, on the island of Mauritius. Here they are thinking, or they think, is sugarcane. The sugarcane is everything. Then, then Pusta Krishna asks, why can't people understand to depend on Krishna? Prabhupada answers in three words. There is Maya, uh, due to Maya. Due to not properly understanding <clears throat> who we are and what is the goal of life, people have invented and concocted 
there's so many systems and so many theories. <clears throat> so we can go right away to some questions here. <clears throat> hmm. This is uh, our 24th session, and uh, we are looking at question number 68. This is from uh, Sruta Kirti Das in Kakinada. Kakinada is in Andhra Pradesh here in India. Hare Krishna Maharaj, kindly accept my humble obeisances. In Srimad Bhagavatam 2.8.27, Srila Sukadeva Goswami was mentioned as uh, Brahmarat, as he was saved by Supreme Lord Krishna. May I know that story, Maharaj? Thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to ask you. There is Vishnurata. <coughs> Parikshit Maharaj is known as Vishnurata. And uh, Sukadeva Goswami is known as Brahmarata. Uh, I am not familiar at, with this story. Uh, I tried to find it actually. <coughs> Uh, so far was not su successful. I did in my small research that I conducted uh, come to know a bit more about uh, Shukadeva Goswami very unusual and uh, exceptional personality uh, being the son of Srila Vyasadev <clears throat> and not being an ordinary uh, living entity in that uh, as we come to know in his uh, previous life he was a resident of Rindavan not an ordinary resident he was uh, <clears throat> in the form of a parrot and not an ordinary parrot but Srimati Radharani's parrot <laughs> So there's some nice stories in connection with that uh, as to why specifically if anyone who's hearing knows the particular story around uh, this name, Brahmarata, why this name was given, you can uh, let us know the reference and we can share that with our uh, audience. Mm. We will go to the next question here which is from um, Bhaktavatar Prabhu in Detroit <clears throat> here is the question what is the significance of having good relationship among devotees to have sustainable Vaishnav communities how to build strong and good relationships with other devotees. <clears throat> it all begins actually with relationship. Uh, that is the whole uh, science of uh, Sambandha, <clears throat> the beginning, <clears throat> understanding our identity and definitely when we want to live in a community <clears throat> then a successful community is based on establishing proper relationships. Um, how to establish proper relationships? The more individuals, actually in the seventh canto of the Bhagavatam, in the very beginning of his explanation to Yudhisthira Maharaj, as Srila Narada Muni explains, or gives a list of the 30 uh, qualities that one must attain in this human form of life. And after giving the uh, 30 qualities in uh, either that purport or very close afterwards, Srila Prabhupada explains how Among those, amongst those people who develop these qualities, <clears throat> the, 
then it will become more easy to establish Varnasrama Dharma. So in other words, uh, communities can only become successful when individuals who are within those communities are God conscious, when they are developing these natural qualities. And uh, recently I was reading how, where was this? Mm. <clears throat> the uh, wonderful descriptions uh, of an ideal, let's say, village. And one of the characteristics was that a village will become, um, will be successful. A village will be prosperous. A village will be stable. <clears throat> when there are no bad people in the village, <laughs> when there are no thieves in the village, when everyone is actually <clears throat> striving to develop Krishna consciousness. So this is the basis, actually. <clears throat> uh, in the spiritual world, <clears throat> everyone is nicely, fully engaged actually, in serving the Lord. So, uh, we can only return to that spiritual abode by learning, by learning to actually serve uh, the devotees of the Lord. So, we can best do that by becoming very fixed up in our individual, personal Krishna Consciousness. <clears throat> of course, there are <clears throat> over and of our individual endeavor uh, to practice Krishna Consciousness, to advance in Krishna Consciousness. <clears throat> there are uh, ways in which a group of people uh, within a community can <clears throat> Uh, create a favorable uh, situation uh, which can help them progress and advance as a group or as a community. <clears throat> having community projects, having activities which require the participation, the presence of um, a large number of residents in a community helps to foster, to bring people closer together. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, <clears throat> so the basic, we could say, factor for establishing uh, good communities is that every individual within those communities uh, <clears throat> are uh, <clears throat> keeping a good and strong sadhana and that they are um, uh, uh, properly engaged, that there are um, qualified brahmanas, at least one qualified brahmana. In one village minimum, one qualified brahmana needs to be there. That is sufficient, actually, to give proper guidance uh, in in the village uh, and therefore <clears throat> one who is a qualified brahmana will be able to help individuals within that community, within that village to understand themselves, to know their identity, to know their varna and to be trained and engaged accordingly, isn't it? Um, so Therefore, what is also important before devotees, because actually most of our devotees are not in that kind of community situation, although a number of devotees would uh, <clears throat> like to live in this kind of community, in a rural community, village. Therefore, one can prepare, one should prepare oneself 
um, those who are planning in this way, they should meet on a regular basis, they should discuss their uh, <clears throat> understanding, their realizations of how a community is uh, meant to be organized. They can be planning together uh, many months, if not many years, before actually uh, <clears throat> physically relocating in such kind of community. I often give the example of uh, one community that I've been involved with actually before its creation, and this is our community in Indonesia, where <clears throat> there were a number of young boys, young boys, not actually boys, <laughs> young men, they were students at a university, and uh, they had uh, <clears throat> they had gradually taken interest in Krishna consciousness. They had established a hostel on campus, practically, or very close to the campus, and uh, they were visiting our ISKCON center, associating with devotees. Their interest grew extensive, quite a lot to the extent that they actually established a second hostel, rented another house. This was t totally on their own, <clears throat> uh, funded by, the, by, by themselves. And then, after some time, uh, some of the girl students, they also rented their own place. So there were three hostels. Huh. And uh, Soon, some of those students were about to graduate, and uh, therefore, uh, <clears throat> we were meditating and thinking how to continue, how to have these devotees maintain their Krishna consciousness and continue being involved in Prabhupada's preaching. And therefore, we presented the idea of why not establish a farm community or a village. And after presenting this idea, they were still at school, uh, about to finish their studies, the first batch. So they were very uh, receptive, very positive. And uh, <clears throat> those same students who graduated and who took up this uh, <clears throat> offer of establishing a community, those very same individuals after 20 plus years are actually the leaders, at least the advisors of the existing community which has developed in some 45 families over some 200 acres of land. The point I'm making is that here were people <clears throat> Uh, they were just in the very early stage of becoming devotees. They never stayed in any ISKCON temple. They never stayed in the ISKCON temple, but they were practicing and they were keeping in contact with devotees. But they knew each other. They were friends, natural friends, some of them even relatives. So this is a very important point, that one has to establish a good uh, relationship, a close relationship, a relationship of trust and friendship mm, with people, uh, devotees, who are having similar plan or similar thought. And if this is not done, it won't go anywhere. Your plans for establishing or making a community will not happen. Uh, so therefore, this is a very important aspect and naturally the responsibility lies on each and every member to, um, <clears throat> to share and, 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 and to be also uh, fixed up and serious in his practice of Krishna consciousness. Yeah. So, 
Hopefully this addresses a little bit the question here. Uh, <clears throat> what is the significance of having good relationship amongst devotees to have a sustainable Vaishnav community? Uh, <clears throat> without such relationship, one cannot have a, a strong community. Um, <clears throat> so let us go to our next question here. Mm. Actually, these are a series of questions uh, from Bhakta Avatar Prabhu. Mm. How important, this is question number 17, how important is trust in devotee relationship? How to build trust in relationships? similar uh, trust uh, will naturally come and develop as one mm, interacts with others uh, <clears throat> trust is very much connected with uh, appreciation with respect with love and <clears throat> relationships uh, don't just happen overnight one has to build one has to give the necessary time to build uh, healthy and wholesome relationships and this is where all of us, actually, I was going to say most of us, but actually all of us, <laughs> all of us in the material world, this is where we are stuck. We are stuck on this first level of Sambandha, Sambandha Gyan, knowledge of our relationship, knowledge of our identity, because we forget actually our identity, our real identity, our real identity of being the humble servant, servant of the servant of the servant. Uh, we fail to develop this mood of humility. And we, uh, this is our disease, we have this tendency of lording it over. That's why we're here in the material world. <coughs> so, uh, trust uh, will only develop as one exchanges, as one uh, uh, engages in different activities, common activities, and uh, naturally the whole thing has to be built on Krishna conscious principles, on uh, Krishna conscious uh, activities, Krishna conscious goals, etc. Uh, <clears throat> So therefore, uh, <clears throat> to establish such trust, uh, again, individually, one must be uh, uh, very sincere and very strong in, in practicing one's own Krishna consciousness. One uh, should avoid becoming overly uh, casual, in one's dealings with devotees. Uh, we are meant to establish relationships, but we should avoid being casual, as people who are not devotees tend to be. <clears throat> we should always uh, <clears throat> uh, respect and understand the uh, very unique uh, and exalted position of any Vaishnava, anyone who is taken up to the practice uh, of Krishna consciousness. Therefore, we should be uh, careful in our dealings, in our exchanges with uh, individuals. <clears throat> it is very nicely explained, of course, in the Nectar of Instruction by Sri Rupa Goswami, how to establish that kind of loving uh, exchanges uh, between devotees uh, where 
by one uh, should reveal one's mind, uh, where, whereby one should offer uh, gifts uh, to others. Uh, by these uh, loving exchanges between devotees, we build up uh, <clears throat> we, we build up a relationship, and then naturally, uh, <clears throat> this aspect of trust will uh, gradually develop. We should expect and we should know that relationships, they take time. You know, it takes time for a uh, healthy relationship to develop and uh, uh, therefore we should not be overly hasty. Uh, and it should all be totally based on Krishna conscious uh, <clears throat> uh, dealings amongst uh, amongst devotees. Mm. <clears throat> These are a few thoughts on how to develop uh, trust amongst devotees. <clears throat> Let's see. One more question. Mm. In ISKCON temples, as we chant, uh, ten offense to be avoided while chanting the holy name. First offense being to blaspheme devotees who have dedicated their, dedicated their life in propagating the holy names of the Lord. Can Your Holiness elaborate on that and give us guidance on how to avoid this offense? <clears throat> Yes, mm. the more we understand how in the Vedic culture uh, we see all living entities as eternal servants of the Lord, not only in human beings but in animals as well. So it's a question of developing this higher consciousness. Pandita uh, Samadarshinaha. We have to see things in a Krishna conscious way. Uh, <clears throat> when it comes to dealing with devotees, even more so. Um, especially those who are <clears throat> committed devotees who have taken initiation. Uh, and who are engaged in propagating the Sankirtan mission, the Sankirtan movement of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, <clears throat> this is our disease. Uh, we have this tendency of fault-finding, uh, fault fault-finding uh, fault and criticizing. <clears throat> Whenever that is uh, prominent, it means that we are uh, very much lacking ourselves in Krishna consciousness. A, as explained by our Acharya, the devotee should be first and foremost mm, <clears throat> concentrating on improving his, ho his own character, on developing uh, the much needed qualities of a devotee. Uh, there are so many things we cannot understand or, or we don't know about other devotees. Um, and we often will only see or know about some particular uh, aspect of that devotee's life. And it may just happen to be something that is possibly questionable. Regardless, it is not our position as devotees to be criticizing uh, others or to openly, as sometimes we see or hear, to openly be uh, blaspheming devotees. <coughs> but we should try to understand how Krishna, uh, 
he immensely appreciates any effort, any small service rendered by his devotee. Uh, <clears throat> Such devotees, I mean all living entities, especially those who are fortunate to come to Krishna consciousness, who have taken up the activities of devotional service, who have uh, decided to become initiated devotees, who are engaged in the preaching mission. Uh, <clears throat> it is so rare to find such personalities. And their position is so exalted, even though there may be some lacking or s some uh, flaws. <clears throat> Again, uh, it is a question of developing a proper consciousness ourselves, uh, learning to appreciate uh, and look and see only the good qualities in other Vaishnavas and completely disregard. Unless one is given that responsibility, for example, in a temple, as an authority, the temple president, or if somebody is initiating guru, uh, <clears throat> then it's his responsibility to actually, in a proper way, <clears throat> point out possibly some defects um, <clears throat> that may be there. But that is uh, not the duty and the responsibility of the rank-and-file devotees. Rank-and-file devotees should develop this humble m mentality and should learn to uh, <coughs> appreciate all, <coughs> all those devotees who are engaged in the Lord's mission. Um, <coughs> And uh, understand that actually uh, it is our own individual shortcoming or our own individual disease to have that tendency of seeing wrong in others. That means that we are not sufficiently busy or preoccupied in finding out our own faults. Uh, <clears throat> We are, that means we're not sufficiently serious in applying Krishna consciousness. So therefore, if devotees uh, are more serious, are more attentive in, in their own practice of Krishna consciousness, we won't have time to see the faults in others. And if, even if they're there, we will understand that it is not for us to uh, uh, point that out to those devotees unless some devotee is asking us directly, Prabhu, can you help me if you notice anything which is something rather rare, but under those circumstances. Otherwise, we should simply uh, <clears throat> be uh, focused on our own um, practice of Krishna consciousness, how we can improve ourselves, how we can develop various qualities, and we must learn to be uh, patient. Uh, we should be more severe with our own lackings or our own shortcomings, and we should be more lenient towards others who may be committing uh, uh, offenses. And uh, so, in this way, by developing a proper consciousness or mentality, we will avoid, uh, we will avoid this very dangerous uh, tendency of, of, uh, of criticizing other devotees. Most of us uh, are not sufficiently uh, having in mind 
the actual philosophy of Krishna consciousness. It, it is just like we hear stories in the Gauda Leela <coughs> of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu chastising Mukunda. Um, and the mentality of Advaita Acharya is that, oh, that devotee is so fortunate. The Lord is giving him attention. He's chastising him. <coughs> I would like, and the Lord is always praising me. <laughs> so the real mentality of a devotee is that he, <coughs> someone was just explaining recently, one considers his enemy someone who is praising him. And one should develop the mentality that he is my friend, one who is criticizing or pointing out my shortcomings. This is a high level <laughs> of consciousness which does not uh, develop immediately. But according to our level of purification, this is how we come to see things. And that is why in that Leela of Advaita Acharya, in order, because he was, you know, being, <clears throat> he was elderly, uh, both in age and also in terms of seniority. Uh, <clears throat> because uh, of his very exalted position, Lord Chaitanya was always uh, praising him. And Advaita Acharya, as we know, uh, <clears throat> did not like to be praised in this way. So as many devotees know, he devised a trick or means by which he would be chastised by Lord Chaitanya, and it worked also. He began to preach Mayavad philosophy, <laughs> and that came to be known, uh, and Lord Chaitanya became very angry at him and started to, to slap him actually. Um, and then Advaita Acharya smiled and immediately Lord Chaitanya could understand this Advaita has tricked me. <laughs> uh, so we, we need to understand how nothing happens by chance. Uh, we will meet someone for the first time and he will start to criticize us. So many things happen. Uh, either on a daily basis or throughout our lives, that we encounter all kinds of situations, some so-called favorable, others unfavorable. A devotee learns to be equiposed. Uh, <clears throat> he is always sober-minded, knowing and understanding that nothing happens by chance. If some bad thing is going to happen to me, uh, either through some individual person or in whatever way, it is meant, a devotee knows, it is meant to happen. It is the arrangement of providence. I have performed so many activities in the past and therefore I am getting this reaction. As, as Sri Rupa Goswami explained in the Nature of Devotion, Whenever some accident or some cut, if we get cut on the, on the finger, then the mentality is that actually I should have lost my finger, <laughs> but only I'm getting a small reaction of being cut. Uh, <clears throat> this is the mood and the mentality that a devotee, uh, those who are advanced devotees, they're constantly in this mood. So whatever happens, they're not disturbed. They're, they're not overcome by any kind of situation or circumstance. <clears throat> this is the kind of mentality uh, that we uh, need to develop and if we do that then immediately just like uh, Sri Larupa Goswami explains <clears throat> we should honor anyone who's chanting the holy name at least mentally you see, uh, the guide, guidelines are given as to how we should relate to different types of devotees. So even one who is just maybe not yet a full-time devotee, but he's 
even chanting once the holy name, we should honor that person mentally because he has begun uh, his uh, <clears throat> activities uh, of devotional service. He has uh, <clears throat> begun his journey of going back home, back to Godhead. It may take him many more lifetimes, but the fact remains that uh, he's a changed person because he has come in contact with the Holy Name, he's come in contact with devotees, he's come in contact with the process of bhakti devotional service. So therefore, again, there's a tendency, uh, what is that saying? Uh, familiar, familiarity breeds contempt. We have to be very cautious in being too close or too familiar amongst devotees. <clears throat> um, and that is why uh, <clears throat> Srila Prabhupada gave us that good habit, introduced that a practice of addressing others as Prabhu. Prabhu means actually master. Uh, he is my Prabhu. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, this is only possible if we purify our consciousness. So everything comes back to this uh, importance of being very uh, serious in our practice of Krishna consciousness, of uh, maintaining, therefore, a strong sadhana, and for the purpose of actually uh, purifying our consciousness. With a purified consciousness, then we will know how to uh, interact with all kinds of devotees and we will be very cautious, we will be extremely cautious in uh, offending uh, any other devotee. So it's a question of, uh, we could say, purified consciousness. That's what devotional service is all about. That's what Krishna consciousness is all about. How to develop a higher consciousness by which we can uh, always nicely be engaged in the Lord's service and when we are dealing with other Vaishnavas, how to deal with them. The guidelines are given by our Acharyas and uh, <clears throat> this most important instruction given by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, 500 years ago still holds today uh, <clears throat> foremost quality for a Vaishnava is to develop uh, this mood of meekness and humility. Trinarapi sunichena tararapi sahishnuna amanena manadena kirtanya sadahari So one should be more tolerant than, than a tree devoid of all sense of false prestige and should be ready to offer all respects unto others. In such a state of mind, one can chant the holy name of the Lord constantly. Uh, <clears throat> so, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we see this in his um, pastimes in Nabudweep in Jagannath Puri. Uh, he was surrounded by such kind of uh, <clears throat> most exalted devotees who were especially uh, exhibiting this mood of, uh, of humility, uh, of meekness. <clears throat> and therefore, uh, we likewise need to develop this kind of mentality. Let's see if we have time for one last question. Yes. What is Brahma Muhurta? What is the significance? This is from Bhakta Avatar Prabhu again. What is the significance of doing or japa during Brahma Muhurta? Brahma Muhurta is that very uh, special period in the early mornings of the day before the sun rises where it is described as being the most uh, auspicious <clears throat> time for
before actually meditating on the Supreme Lord. We know that uh, the hours before sunrise, especially, and up until possibly 8 or 9 o'clock, but especially before sunrise, are most conducive for our practice of spiritual life. And therefore, it is uh, <clears throat> the practice in the Vedic culture for uh, people, even common people, uh, <clears throat> who live this Vedic uh, lifestyle in villages, have the habit of getting up early in the morning. So the uh, mornings are said to be in the mode of goodness and then as the day progresses, mode of passion and then finally the mode of ignorance. Uh, <clears throat> the different hours of the day uh, are also connected with the various pastimes of the Lord. Uh, that's a whole subject matter uh, in itself. Mm, for example, it is um, during these early hours that we are uh, attending, uh, participating in what we call Mangalarati. Mangalarati uh, is um, that period where <clears throat> we uh, fix our mind, meditate on uh, both Guru and Krishna because we cannot be successful in remembering Krishna, uh, in glorifying Krishna <clears throat> without uh, the uh, blessings of the spiritual master. So Srila Prabhupada has introduced uh, these uh, very nice prayers in the early mornings so that Mangala, so that the whole day actually can become auspicious. Mangala means auspicious. So the activities that will make our day uh, most auspicious by, from the very beginning, focusing our mind, focusing our thoughts, uh, focusing our feelings and our desires uh, <clears throat> on the lotus feet of the Lord. <clears throat> so therefore, devotees uh, are meant to rise. Uh, that's why modern day civilization is completely uh, not knowing about uh, how important it is to rise early in the morning. Uh, and sometimes our own devotees also uh, uh, tend to uh, f forget how important it is. Prabhupada would say we should not rise after four o'clock. Rising after four o'clock for devotee, it is very inauspicious. It is not good. One should f be in that habit of rising within four o'clock. Uh, every day, taking a shower and uh, <clears throat> putting on fresh tilak and then attending uh, Mangalarati. This is the daily practice as instructed, as demonstrated uh, by our own um, founder, Acharya Srila Prabhupada. And if we do this, then our consciousness will be nice. Our consciousness will be peaceful. Our days will be auspicious because we will have followed the recommended process in the Shastra for beginning our day at an auspicious time in the proper consciousness. And uh, in this way, by uh, starting our day early, we can finish our day early also. That's also important. Rising early and taking rest early, uh, both are most important. <clears throat> uh, so uh, this is very much part of 
the sadhana for every devotee. Uh, every devotee needs to understand <clears throat> why Srila Prabhupada gave us this uh, morning program. Uh, if we follow this morning program by rising early, by showering, by chanting the holy name, by hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, then our whole day will go smoothly. If not, we will have all kinds of uh, problems or difficulties. <clears throat> so the Brahma Muhurta hour is uh, uh, filled with auspiciousness and uh, opportunity to be uh, uh, nicely meditating uh, on the Lord, on His holy name, on His form, uh, <coughs> Nama, Rupa, Lila, uh, on His activities, etc. This is actually the very last question <laughs> that we have, uh, that we have received. And uh, as I mentioned in the beginning of the program, this, these sessions are based on questions. And unless there are questions, then it will be difficult to continue. Thank you all very much for your kind uh, participation. May you all remain safe, especially in your practice of Krishna Consciousness. <clears throat> so we'd like to end our program today by together reciting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Jai Srila Prabhupada ki. Jai. Jai Samastha Gaur Bhakta Vrinda ki. Jai. Jai Nithai Gaur Dupi Manande. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.